What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, again, let's take a look at what we have going on. Well, actually, first, what I want to say, we're going to change the ad for it, but we have tomorrow uh, yet again another installment of live trading uh, Fridays with Larry Pasavento. This is, uh, I really always look forward to this. Um, this is going to be the second and fourth Friday of every month. Again, come check it out. This is from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time. You can sit back and watch Larry trade. This is pretty awesome because, you know, you get to follow along and kind of get some insight into uh, how Larry trades. And, of course, um, Larry is a veteran if there ever uh, was one in the market. So go ahead and check out uh, the services page on TFNN. That is also on the front page right down here. All right, let's take a look. So a little bit of a rebound today, huh? You have the E-mini trading up about 2.13%. Uh, obviously, same with the SPY. The Russell Futures of about 2.24%. Uh, the NQs at 2.78, and then the Dow futures up about 1.7. Gold also doing pretty well today, about 1.26%, trading at 2,463 on that contract. Uh, you have silver trading at 27.55, of about 2.27%, and copper uh, green as well. Uh, Tesla recovering a little bit, um, but of course had a pretty big sell off uh, yesterday. Hate these weekly charts on some of these things here. You have a lot of people thinking like, hey, you know, I mean, wow, well, like, I mean, it's given that whole run up on. And that was a run up on some decent volume as well, you know. So we'll see what happens with that. Dollar trading at 103.22. Still dynamics up a little bit at 107. I want to see Lucid quickly up 7.39%. The reason why I say that is because you have Rivian up as well, uh, up about 8.63% trading at 14 uh, 97 Palantir. This is some pretty big news. Pretty solid. Uh, we're trading up about 10.6% right now in Palantir after a pretty big decline on August 5th. Of course, so everything else uh, was selling off as well. What is going on with that? Well, they're partnering with Microsoft to deliver what Microsoft is calling enhanced analytics and AI services to classified networks uh, for critical national security operations. That is, they're selling this stuff to the government which is pretty solid. Let's take a look here. Uh, Palantir works closely with the government to provide software, visualize army positions, among other services. Uh, they'll use this partnership to launch its products, such as Gotham, Foundry, Apollo, and AIP. And that is going to be on Azure. Um, I think the military uses a lot of Azure, uh, but I don't know for sure. Uh, but this is pretty phenomenal, right? Uh, this is great for Palantir. They reported earnings earlier in the week, raising its annual revenue forecast between $2.7 billion and $2.75 billion. That's up from $2.68 to $2.69. Uh, Carp said, as the CEO said in a letter to shareholders at the time that the company's trailing 12-month revenue in the U.S. government business, which includes Intel and defense agencies, surpassed $1 billion uh, for the first time. The company earned 54% of its revenue from government clients during the second quarter. Quarter. And again, what we were talking about as well with Palantir opening up uh, some of their programs that compile data and make accurate models. Based on them, uh, some of the entry-level entry products are now free, which is awesome. That's going to get more people uh, to kind of interact with Palantir's products and hopefully uh, expand into the rest of their suite as well. Uh, this is pretty good for Palantir. Let's see if anything else they say here, so Palantir, Microsoft, a long history of operating in secure and accredited environments to deliver technology, okay. Yeah, so in Microsoft Azure government, in the Azure government secret, that's DOD impact level six and top secret clouds. I mean, the fact that Microsoft even has that is fantastic. Palantir will also be an early adopter of Azure's open AI service in Microsoft secret and top secret environments. The integrated solutions of Microsoft's Azure Cloud compute and powerful language models uh, with Palantir's Foundry's data integration and ontology capabilities and AIP's use case building capabilities will enable operators to safely and responsibly build AI-driven operational workloads across defense and intelligence, intelligence verticals. So another thing as well in this, where we speak about, you know, there's so much money going into AI, or at least there has been. Of course, you've been having a sell-off kind of recently, but that's to be expected, I would think, at some certain point. Uh, the question is, is when does this start generating some value, right? And I have this Bloomberg article over here, and you have the UK, at least, are planning to uh, develop an AI lab, and this is going to counter hostile state threats. This is really cool. And so we take a look at this a little bit, stepping uh, up efforts to tackle cyber and artificial intelligence threats from hostile foreign states. 
uh, essentially what this is going to allow them to do is essentially communicate uh, cross ministry in order to develop, uh, you know, better profiles on what's going on. So different kind of threats and how you can kind of deal with that as well. Uh, I think this is really cool. Let's see. All right, let's see here. We also have Costa in Boston calling uh, regarding gold. Costa, are you there? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Great. My question to you is, if we get a 1929 depression again, what would happen to gold if gold stocks? Can you say that one more time? I'm having a hard time hearing you there, Costa. If we get a 1929 depression again, what would happen to gold and gold stocks? If we get a 1929 depression again, what will happen with gold stocks? I mean, you know, there's this idea that gold has traditionally been, you know, kind of this safe flight uh, in capital. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I, I have not really kind of thought about what would happen if we hit something like the Great Depression again regarding gold, right? I think you have a lot of unique asset classes that exist today that are a little bit different um, than, you know, what happened previously. You know, uh, I suppose in high deflation, you know, you could get some kind of, again, capital flight with gold if everything else is kind of deflating at a higher rate. Um, but, you know, that's a good, that's a really good question. I, I'm, I'm not sure on that, Costa. You know, what I could okay. say as well, um, you know, you could email Tom or we could wait for him to be back on to ask him that kind of question. Um, okay, but that's unique. I, I'm not sure exactly. Okay, so that's right. Are you, are you foreseeing that we might have something like that? No, well, Donald Trump said we might have one today at his news conference. Interesting. Was that at Mar-a-Lago? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not familiar with him making that. I'll have to look at that kind of after the show. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, there are so many different asset classes that exist now um, that I, I think might compete, in a sense, with something like gold. Um, I know there's a lot of talk against crypto, and I'm not saying gold and crypto are necessarily uh, the same thing, but the way that these kind of two things operate um, are, are somewhat similar in certain circumstances. You know, I wonder if we flee out of America, if you have a deflation like that, or excuse me, a depression like that, but then you run the risk of the whole world going into something. So I don't know. That's an interesting uh, kind of question. Thanks for calling in and asking that, Costa. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, take care, Costa. Folks, uh, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Thank you.